Today, we got steering problems. That's right guys, we got problems with the Hughes steering and in today's video I am going to go over how to check to see if you have steering problems, why you need to check your steering every time before you go out on the water, and also step one of troubleshooting it and hopefully trying to fix it. Now for most of you, steering problems might be an easy thing to diagnose, but if you're a new boat owner like me, you might not be able to easily diagnose a steering problem or know what your steering is supposed to feel like. So I wanted to take the time to kind of show you guys what bad steering looks like. Now, if you can't steer at all, obviously that's a huge issue, but what if you're in a situation where, you know, you're steering your steering wheel and the motor is still moving, so you don't think that the steering is completely shot, but it's not as responsive or moving the way it should. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an example right now of what I'm talking about so you know if it's happening to you that you might have a steering problem. Watch how many turns it takes for me to move that motor to the right. Okay, you can see there now it's moved to the right and I can just keep on turning and turning and turning and it doesn't stop. And if you look, it is full lock to the right. Now watch what happens when I turn it to the left, how many times it takes me to steer how many times it takes me to turn this thing before it even moves. Okay, there it's, it's moving now, it's moving now. But see how many turns it's taking to do anything. And I have it completely in the middle right now. Let me see how many times it takes me to get to the left. It's full lock now, but I can continue to move and steer and it just keeps steering. So. Obviously there's an issue. It should be much more responsive than that. Shouldn't take that many turns for it to start moving and it certainly shouldn't take as many turns as it did to get to full lock. So if that's happening to you, you definitely have a problem. Now before I get onto the fix, I want to let you guys know why this particular situation kind of scared me a little bit after the fact and why I believe you should check your steering every time you go out on the water. And the reason is, if you get out on the water without checking your steering and you do have a problem like me, let's say you are going through the channel and you need to make a turn, but you can't turn and be as responsive as you need to be, well, that's a potential for catastrophe. You're running into a channel marker, you're running aground, or when there are a ton of boats around, it could potentially lead to a collision. So an easy way to check to see if you're steering might have an issue is before you load the boat up on the trailer or if it's already loaded up, just simply try and move it back and forth. If you can move it this much, signs are you might have an issue. Now, in addition, what you can do is if you do see that it has a lot of free play like that, you can go up to the helm and just turn the wheel like I did earlier in the video. And if it's taking you more than a few turns to get that motor to move at all, or it's not even moving, then you definitely have a steering problem and I would not suggest going out on the water because you could end up in a very bad situation. Now before we get into the next part of the video, I do want to put a huge disclaimer out there. I am by no means a marine mechanic. I'm just an average fisherman who has a boat and trying to fix the steering. So I want to put that out there before we get into the next part of the video because I don't want you guys to blame me if you try to do the same thing as me and mess up your boat. So with that out of the way, from all the research that I've done, the hydraulic steering could have one of three potential issues with it. Uh, I'm gonna basically go over those based on difficulty and trying to repair them. Now, the first one that I'm going to do is by far the easiest. It's simply that your hydraulic steering could have air in the system and it needs to be bled. The other two steps are a little bit more complicated. I'm hoping I can get this straightened out with the first troubleshooting method, but if not, I will make sure to let you guys know what the other two things are that could possibly be wrong, and I'll leave some videos down below uh, to help you guys if I can't fix it. So, first step of troubleshooting is going to go ahead and try to bleed the air out of my hydraulic steering system. I bought a simple kit from Marine Tech on Amazon. I will make sure to leave a link down to everything that I bought below if you want to go ahead and, and pick that up for your system. It's simply obviously some hydraulic steering fluid uh, to be able to replace any fluid that might be lost in the lines. And then I also picked up a bleeder kit from Marine Tech. And all it consists of is a way to be able to connect the hydraulic steering fluid into your helm. And then also a fitting that will go down on the hydraulic system uh, on the outboard to be able to make sure that nothing leaks or anything like that. So 
we're gonna go ahead and get into step one. All right, step one is to locate where your fill valve is on your helm. From most systems, it's going to be located somewhere on the console. A lot of times it's actually in the helm itself, but for some reason mine is actually right here to the right. Um, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you guys just how to go ahead and open it. You're just gonna untwist this right here. Like I said, for some people, it's probably going to be you know anywhere in this area, but they all look relatively the same. So if you see something like that, most likely it's gonna be the fill spot for your hydraulic fluid. So that is the fill location. Now, I don't know if you guys were able to hear it on camera, but when I did undo that screw, I did hear some air come out. So hopefully that means that's what the problem is. Now what's cool with the Marine Tech system is it comes with a quick release system that are all brass fittings. So what's really cool is uh, here, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the actual part that's gonna plug into the helm filling station and it's a quick release. So I'm just going to pop it like so. This is gonna be the piece that I put in the helm. What's nice about those brass fittings is they all have a really nice seal. So it's gonna really prevent the amount of hydraulic steering fluid that could potentially leak. And you also have a really slim chance of cross threading your fittings. I know that one of the Marine Tech systems that's plastic, a bunch of people said they had issues with cross threading on the hydraulic fluid. So that's why I went with the brass fittings is because I didn't wanna to have to have that problem. Okay, next step is there are two little valves here. Uh, for your system, I have a Bay Star. If you have a C Star, it might be different, um, but they all relatively look the same. You're gonna take these little things off. This is the bolt that you want to unscrew to you see a very tiny amount of hydraulic fluid coming out of here. Uh, probably a little too much for my liking, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. Okay, just clips right on. And then now, I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. So I ran into a bit of a problem. This particular line isn't big enough to fit because of the way that my fittings are on the outside here and here. So I'm gonna improvise and see if I can figure it out. And if I can, bonus. If not, I'll have to scrap this video. All right guys, so what I did to try and improvise is I went ahead and just connected this particular uh, fitting and I loosened this particular bleed valve uh, enough for there to be a little bit of hydraulic fluid coming out. Um, and then as you can see here, there is some fluid in here. It's not coming out there, which is good. So I'm gonna just go ahead and try and do it one side at a time to hopefully get enough hydraulic fluid in here and the air out at the same time. So once this is on, we will move on to the next step. All right guys, what is my life without a little bit of compromise? Uh, so what the next step is, is we are now going to hook the fitting that goes to the hydraulic fluid. I'm gonna screw this on the lid, I can get it open. Okay, finally got it off. So all I'm gonna do is attach this to the fluid, make sure it's nice and snug. And then I'm gonna use this end to plug into the quick connect valve that is on the helm. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, the moment of truth here. Okay, and then the next thing is you want to move this up. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that up. All right, I kind of wish I had a couple more hands, but what I'm gonna do now, uh, as you guys can see, there's already air coming out from the line. And the next step is just to turn the wheel to the left and to the right, and you will see the air bubbles come out of there. That's what you want. Go ahead and turn.
Yeah, you guys can see there's a lot. I don't know if you can tell, there's a lot of air coming out of the system right now. And then you're just gonna do this until you don't see any more air coming out. As you can see, there is a lot of air in the system here. And I know you guys can't tell, but it's already feeling a lot more responsive. And there's still air coming out, so. And you know, that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. With that much air coming out, I really hope there isn't a bigger leak that I'm unaware of. Um, you know, this is a 17 year old boat, so it's possible that just over time, uh, you know, air's gotten in the system and this is maybe the first time that it's been bled. So I'm hoping that's what it is, but we're gonna keep on turning this wheel until the rest of the air comes out and then I will see you guys then. All right, the left side finally got to a point where there was no more air bubbles coming through. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly, I'm going to switch this tube to this side here. And then we are gonna do the same thing, make sure that there's no air coming out. And hopefully that is the end of our problems. All right guys, doing the same thing now on the right side of the hydraulic steering. So I'm just gonna turn this wheel to the right, see if we can get some of that fluid going through. See if we can get some air bubbles. There's a few more air bubbles it looks like. So we're just gonna let it do its thing. Get all of the air out of there. As you can see too, there's a significantly less amount of bubbles coming through here which to me means a good thing. It means I don't think there's any more air in the system. Yep, there's, there's no air coming through there. So just give it a couple more turns. Well guys, there's no more air that's coming through that uh, pipe or tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything and do a comparison of turning the wheel versus uh, turning the wheel now versus what it was before. Let's see what it looks like. All right, boat is all the way to the right. Got my tape here so we can tell how many turns it truly takes to turn it from lock to lock. Let's go ahead and count and see what the result is. One, two, three, four, five, six, about six and three quarters. We will just count it six and a half for good measure. As you can tell, a huge difference and it was quite an easy fix. Honestly, probably took me 30 minutes um, overall probably a little longer just because I was recording this video, but super easy fix. And that is the first step of troubleshooting if you have steering issues. Now, if you bleed your system and there's still problems, it could be a couple of other things. And you know, this is something that I'm gonna look out for in the next few times I go out. Uh, one, the seals on your system, on the actual steering, could potentially uh, be broken and allowing air or liquid to be floating, allowing air or some of the fluid to be leaking out. If that's the case, you'd have to obviously replace the seals. And then thirdly, which I think is probably the most complicated, is there could be a small leak or maybe a large leak in your actual hydraulic lines. That would obviously require you to take the entire lines out and replace them with new lines, which probably would be quite, quite the undertaking. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with the bleeding of the air out of the system for right now, see if that fixes my issues. 
Uh, the next couple times I go out, I'll make sure to let you guys know and give you an update to see if that fixed it. If you do have any questions about this video, make sure to leave them down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button because as you guys know, boat stands for bust out another thousand. And being that this boat is 17 years old, there's sure to be something else wrong with it in the future. And I'll make sure to make a video about it. So until the next video, I hope you guys are able to get out on the water and catch some fish.